Welcome to the Downtown Madison Happenings Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Ilstrip, president of Downtown Madison, Inc. And on this episode, we're excited to welcome Tyler Kennedy, the co-founder and senior vice president of operations for Fetch, and a fantastic company that many of you know well that is headquartered right here in Downtown Madison. The Downtown Happenings Podcast is brought to you by Sustainable HR PEO and Colath CPA, a local professional service firm supporting Madison businesses and nonprofits just like DMI with their various back of office needs. The firm aims to provide high quality professional services and be true business partners to small and mid-market employers. If you're interested in accounting, tax advisory, HR, payroll and benefits administration, Sustainable HR PEO and Colath our local providers who are committed to serving Madison and the downtown community. Well, speaking of someone that serves the downtown community so well, our great friends at Fetch, we're so excited to have Tyler Kennedy here again, co-founder and senior vice president of operations with Fetch. How are you today, Tyler? I'm doing great, Jason. Thanks so much. Nice to talk to you today. Yeah, absolutely. We're excited to talk about, you know, Fetch. Many of us know it. We use it in the grocery stores. We use it all the time. But I think a lot of you don't know, it's headquartered right here in downtown Madison. And they just uh, built a great office in the Cappy section of downtown right off of East Washington Avenue. So, Tyler, we'd love to hear more about Fetch. I mean, this is this amazing company that has grown so significantly since 2013. And much of that growth has been right here in Madison. It's been fun to watch. So what is Fetch and, you know, how do people use Fetch on on a daily basis? Yeah, perfect. Thanks for asking. Um, Like you said, and appreciate the intro, um, Fetch started here in Madison. And I'll I'll give a little bit of the story of what we got started doing. And and it looks a lot different today than it did back in the beginning, like so many businesses do um, throughout their growth cycle. But Fetch... um, you know, Fetch got started back actually in 2012. Um, our CEO, uh, Wes, was in college at UW-Madison. And for the first time, he was shopping on his own, going to stores. And he was found himself buying the same products, shopping at the same stores week after week, but not being rewarded for his loyalty, right? And, you know, he he was taught about the importance of, of savings and whatnot. And, and that's what got him started thinking about Fetch, Right. And so I met Wes in the fall of 2012 at UW-Madison and um, talked a little bit about the idea for an app for consumers to track their purchases, earn points from their favorite merchants, from their favorite brands. Um, And that's where it all got started. In 2013, actually, Wes and I ended up having a class together, an entrepreneurship class at UW-Madison. And that kicked off our collaboration um, while we created the business plan for Fetch. And so we wrote the business plan centered around our first app, um, which later became known as ShopFetch. And ShopFetch was um, an in-store mobile shopping app. So shoppers would go through the store, they would scan their products, scan the barcodes um, on their phone as they shopped. Uh, We had a piece of technology at checkout that would then expedite the checkout process. And, And while shopping, we provided a running total, we provided um, special offers in the aisle, able to you know influence and help um, customers save right there as they're making the decision on what to purchase, um, and and that's that's really where we got started was with that app, and it was still very much at our core as it is today, centered around helping shoppers save and get rewarded for the loyalty to the stores and and the brands that they're shopping at and buying you know week in and week out. <clears throat> And so that was the very beginning. Um, we we got started, like I said, at UW Madison, and it started with the business plans. And and because it was you know in the city of Madison and, and with the university, we were entering into the business plan competitions. Um, one of the two of the main ones were sponsored through the university, and it was through those two and a couple of others that we entered into, and one that really got us our start. So we ended up winning, actually, free office space um, for a year through UW-Madison. We won a bunch of cash all together between cash, office space, you know, legal advice, and other prizes. Everything was valued at over $150,000, and that got us off the ground. Um, So that was the beginning of 2013. And throughout the year, then we started building. We built the the first app and we launched in October of 2013 at Fresh Madison Market right downtown. 
Um, and you know, the stories of, of being locked in the grocery store after they close, um, late at night when people are, you know, college students are going out on Thursdays and we're trying to figure out how to make this thing work. Um, you know, it was a lot of fun back then. Um, I mean, that's, let me just, that's like a, that's like a movie, right? Like where, <laughs> you know, like night at the museum, right? You're night at Fe <laughs> Fresh Madison Market. You're surrounded by heads of lettuce. Like, how can I, how are we going to figure out this problem? But Tyler, it's a very cool story, right? I mean, you all met at UW, which we always are so blessed to have in downtown, right? It's this economic engine. And look at this entrepreneurial story. It's a truly a, a UW and a Madison story. It's it's so cool. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it's funny how you mentioned like surrounded by heads of lettuce. There was one <laughs> night and I have a photo of Wes and I uh, taking photos of produce. So we uh, <laughs> put them in the app, like after the store closed. Um, funny, funny photo shoot there uh, to just try and like bring more imagery into the app. Um, but yeah, it, you know, it started there and and that got a, that helped us figure out, um, you know, how to make things work better, improve the technology. You know, 2014, 2015, we, we grew um, still very much local to Madison and, and Wisconsin. Um, in October of 2014, we actually launched our like most successful store with the app in Lake Mills, Wisconsin. Um, also, they have another store. The owner has another store, uh, Cap City Market, right? Downtown as well. Um, and and the owner, he Mitch, he just believed in Fetch and got to the point where a third of all transactions were going through this, you know, brand new technology. Um, and, and that helped us get the momentum, continue launching stores 2015 and into 2016. We had stores eventually from California to Massachusetts, Rhode Island. Uh, and that growth got us our first, you know, major partnership with a brand, which was Kraft Heinz. And, um, you know, Heinz, uh, uh, Oscar Meyer, I'm sorry, was located in Madison as well. Um, and so that's what brought us together. And, and they wanted a loyalty program. Uh, and it was through that relationship that we began building Fetch as we know it today, which ultimately launched, you know, internally for a beta test in 2016 and publicly in 2017. So that was the, the real start of it. I mean, um, you know, you, you just you can see these Madison roots. It's just so fun to see and to see what you've become now. And, you know, love to hear about, you know, this latest generation of what you're working on and you're consistently improving your business and now you become something so big it's it's just so fun to i gotta say it's just fun for us to to watch certainly it's inspiring certainly. great i'd love to hear that um yeah so i'll talk a little bit about where we are you know what we're doing today in the app today before i do uh and expand on that i want to talk a little bit about loyalty programs because that's where we got started was this conversation with Kraft Heinz, right most loyalty programs are designed by huge companies kind of with their own brand in mind, right? Not what the consumer, not what you as a user wants. So we have all these different loyalty programs, all these different, um, you know, they, they all expect you to go download their app, download their program. And while they're not usually difficult, there's just a lot of them. And it's up to the consumer to do all the work and figure out, um, you know, what, what they need to do to get rewarded. Um, and that's kind of the start is like Fetch wants to put the consumer first and bring the value to the consumers. And so for Fetch to be successful, you know, two things have to be true, right? We have to bring a large number of people. And right now we have more than 15 million uh, monthly active users. <clears throat> um, and, and so we have to bring a lot of those people together and, and have them engage with, the, with Fetch and with the brands that participate. And if we do that, then we can bring in a large variety of brands to, to bring the value to the users. And in doing so, right, we can personalize each individual's offering at scale in a way that has not been done uh, before. And so how we do that though, how we you know build on those two things is super critical. And we're focused on three core principles, right? Making it easy is the first, right? Budgeting, couponing, saving money. Like we all know that we should do those things, but it's a chore. And, you know, a lot of times like saving money, people feel like they have to sacrifice something. They're not getting what they want because they have to save. Um, and it was our goal from the beginning to like make it, uh, make it easy, make it a no brainer for them. So you don't have to be tech savvy to, to use the app. And fun is the other aspect of it, right? A lot of times it's negative when you spend money, you're seeing your bank account go down. 
Um, but if we make it a positive that you, you feel like you're doing the right thing, you feel smart because of your use of it, it'll be better for, for shoppers, right? And so making it fun from the dog, uh, our logo, Kelvin, um, to just earning points in general, right? It, it brings the fun factor there. Um, and we try and do all of this in a way that's smart to help, uh, you know, each individual like get more points and, and make everything more customizable. And so by executing well on those three things, uh, we, we can help turn something that people know they should do saving money, right. Into something that they want to do. And that brings the routine nature of it, right. That's, that's part of why we started in the grocery space. It's something that you do every week so that we can build that habit. Um, and, um, you know, you do that no matter where you shop and, and what you're buying. So that kind of talks a little bit about this like shift of, of power to the consumer, right? You look at Uber and Airbnb, it's unifying a lot of people. And in the same way that Fetch is uh, with, you know, in those cases, cars or extra space to rent um, and helping bridge that and, and bring together people with the, um, you know, bridge together the people with the need with the people with what they want and do so like when they want it, when they need it. And that's exactly what we're doing with Fetch, where we're trying to, um, you know, bring lots of people together to earn savings and earn the value that they're creating. Anytime a company, a merchant, website, game, service makes money off of how you're spending your time, money, or attention, you, the consumer, uh, uh, should earn rewards. And that's that's what we're building towards. And I'll get to that a little bit more in the future. Um but if you look at the app store, right, Fetch's purpose is to live rewarded. And, and so we're advocating on behalf of our users every day. Um, what they're buying, you know, and where they're spending their time, that tells Fetch, that tells us where the rewards need to be. And so where users and consumers throw the ball, we're going to go fetch the points for the shoppers, basically. Um, but the other side of the business, right, is... Uh, the, 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 I'm sorry, our partners. Um, we are partnering with all of these big brands to provide rewards and provide uh, points to our shoppers, right? And because we have such a big base, brands love us. We have the most engaged and loyal customers because they love the points. And our partners are, are using that and benefiting from that because they can create lifelong customers by partnering with Fetch. We get this one-to-one -one relationship that you don't get um, anywhere else. A lot, so, mon so much of the time, um, you know, customer purchases are just rented or borrowed with weekly ads and things like that. And people are brand switching. Um, but with the power of Fetch Points, uh, it, it creates a much longer lasting brand loyalty. So that leads to then how consumers are using the app, right? If they're snapping their receipts every week, they're earning the points. Um, we're actually seeing uh, a huge shift. Like our users are, are snapping the majority of their weekly receipts. We get 30 receipts per month from our users. And that equates to eight, like more than almost 90% of each household's purchases are being submitted through Fetch. So when I talked about what users are telling us they're buying and where they want their rewards, right? We can see and understand they're buying, you know, uh, cheese. They want rewards on, on cheese, shredded cheese, black cheese, whatever, or maybe it's um, baked cookies. And we can use that information to go partner with the brands, the manufacturers of those goods to offer rewards and offer points to our users. And most, um, the, the craziest stat to me is actually that um, all of the, the volume of users and the volume of receipts that we see equates to total um, purchases at the scale of $152 billion annually. So that's the equivalent of the third largest retailer in the US, you know, right behind Amazon and Walmart. And so Fetch's influence actually, uh, both for brands and for consumers, is huge in terms of the rewards that we can offer to shoppers and the loyalty that we can offer to brands. And that's really what creates kind of the whole ecosystem, the whole marketplace. That's a win-win business model, right? If brands are, um, you know, putting out offers and, and rewards for users, users are making money and Fetch just sits in the middle, in the middle 
and earns money anytime the user gets uh, gets rewarded, right? And and that's how we feel it should be. Uh, and and that concept, that marketplace that we're building, is the foundation for um, our our broader vision, our broader mission, which is basically to create the world's rewards platform, right? Uh, so it all started with the grocery space um, because that's what you do week in and week out. And you're getting rewarded for the food that you buy. We expanded to restaurants and, and where you go out to eat is kind of the next big thing uh, and where you shop as well. Um, but we've recently, uh, you know, this year launched Fetch Play. So you can earn points and get rewarded for games that you play, mobile games that you play. And uh, as over the next five years to 10 years, if you're watching a video on a streaming service, if you're playing a game on your phone or or watching an ad, like I said earlier, anytime you're creating value for a, a, a company, uh, you should be able to share in that value that you're creating uh, via Fetch Rewards. And can you just, I, I just, you blew my mind with the $152 trillion. <laughs> I mean- Billion. We'll get to oh, a billion, billion, right. billion. Sorry, I said billion. Yeah, billion. But that is in, an absolutely incredible amount. And it seems to me that that's just the tip of the iceberg, right, with you, Tyler. I mean, you want to be involved in just about every sort of retail transaction possible, right? Um, and you're creating this, this sort of really fun, smart, but yet efficient way to get this information and to, to have fun with shopping and to create rewards for folks. I mean, it seems to me 152 billion is just the tip of the iceberg, right? If you're now getting into restaurants, you're, I'm sure you're getting into, you know, clothing and, and whatever dry goods are, you know, uh, all of these different things. This is just the beginning for Fetch. Yeah, 100%. Uh, you know, Wes and I always talk about how, um, you know, this is, we're at the starting line, right? Uh, sure, we've we've built this foundation, but there's so much more that we can do, so much further that we can go uh, in terms of the ways that we can reward people. If you just think about how you're spending your time, where do you fill up with gas? Um, you know, what shows are you watching? Uh, what social media videos and creators do you watch and, and enjoy? All of those things are things, you know, the creators are getting paid from the social media companies, but it's all because of your eyeballs, right? So why don't you get to participate in some of that reward as well? I mean, maybe it was a Freudian slip when I said trillion, not billion, but this is <laughs> trillions of dollars, right? In transactions. I remember we were... We were, you know, during COVID, there was some concern about, uh, you know, the, the bricks and mortar retail locations, right? There were re questions about, you know, what what is the future of some of these mom and pop stores right here on State Street that, you know, we pay attention to. Uh, and I heard a statistic that uh, they thought generally 25% of all retail transactions were going to be online by 2025. That was pre-pandemic. And then post-pandemic, it actually was supposed to be now a third. And that was trillions of dollar difference. And so you're seeing this happen sort of live happening. You know, this is trillions of dollars of total transactions that you all could be involved in. Absolutely. Yeah. It, to, to your point about mom and pop, you know, we, we saw the shift with, um, with COVID, right? Everything went online, a lot of online ordering. Um, and, you know, depending on the category, right, some, some stayed high, some went back to groceries and, you know, buying your produce in store and things like that. Um, but, you know, if you think about a lot of other, uh, you know, marketing platforms out there on social media and whatnot, anybody, any mom and pop can go create an ad on Facebook or any of the other big sites um, and and drive users, drive, drive viewership, drive awareness of their store or their product or whatever. Um, and we can do the exact same thing, right? We're building towards a, a state where we'll be able to offer self-service for uh, a lot of, you know, smaller brands, smaller shops, smaller manufacturers, whatever it is, if they're regional players, or even if they're just super uh, hyper local, that you can have, um, you know, Jason's cookie shop, uh, you know, run an offer through Fetch and, you know, drive people in the area that you exist to your stores, and they can earn rewards when they pop in and, and buy some cookies from you. Tyler, let's be very clear with that example you just gave. I don't know how to bake. And so that probably is the first baseline for that successful business. But what you're doing is helping create 
another avenue to be successful for local businesses. And I think we can all agree that is beneficial to our community in the downtown space, right? There's about 400 retail businesses around State Street in the Capitol Square, and 82% of those are locally owned. And, you know, you're giving them another tool. You talked about how you started with, you know, Cap Center Foods and Fresh Madison Market. You're giving them the opportunity to compete with some of these larger entities and be successful because I think a successful downtown for us includes a lot of local retail. It's our neighbors that own the clothing store or own the restaurant. So you really are helping these small businesses uh, compete in a different way. Right. Absolutely. And we'll, we'll continue to ramp up with that. And, you know, that's one of the things that given how Fetch got its start in Madison at UW with Fresh Madison Market, uh, I, I told the story about, you know, the business plan competitions, uh, Fresh Madison Market themselves, um, you know, we wouldn't have been able to to get off the ground in the way that we did without the help of the community, right? Um, the the people who donated their money, time, services, whatever, uh, for the business plan competitions. Fresh Madison Market let us in there uh, and tinker around on their cash registers, right? A a, a big uh, you know potential risk for them if if they think about it that way, but also just obstructing their cash registers at times when they they couldn't use it, right? If we're we're tinkering tinkering around on them trying to make this thing work, um, and so you know recognizing the community that gave so much to us to get started. Uh, you know, that's why we're we try to be present present uh, in the community as well with a lot of the um, things that we do, you know, bringing in high school students uh, and, and middle school students to um, learn about uh, AI and ML and things like that and um, give back with the Goodman Center. Um, and, and we try and reach out to the community and provide a lot of resources through means like that um, and our, our social uh, our social um, team as well. <clears throat> And I just want to be very clear, you know, Tyler, you and the team, Wes, you all have been such great supporters of us as an organization uh, and many organizations around town. You, you just discussed Goodman and so many of the others. And we're so thankful, right? Because you really are a virtual company, right? Your people are located all throughout the country and probably the world that are working for you. But downtown Madison is still seems to me to be part of your ethos, part of your your culture and who you are. And in fact, you just made a significant investment in some amazing office space uh, right on East Washington. Why, you just you sort of hinted at why downtown Madison is important, but why does it continue to be important to have it be your corporate headquarters and have the office space on East Washington? Yeah, it's um, <clears throat> downtown Madison and East Wash is great. I mean, it's been, you know, coming back to life over the last five, 10 years, right? And it's really just a vibrant place to be these days, which is absolutely amazing, like right in the heart of all the, the growth. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, right down the street too, from where we got started, um, just across town, really. So, so that's amazing. But Madison itself, you know, in addition to being in the middle of uh, some really great communities there on East Wash, uh, you know, it's for business, it, it makes sense as well. There's a ton of talent. It's easy to get to, um, you know, whether it's public transit, whether it's coming in from the east side, the west side, um, or any other communities around Madison. And it's proximity to the airport too, right? Like East Wash is super easy to get to for people, whether they're just popping in for a, a quick, um, you know, a quick meeting for a day, or we also do host a lot of gatherings uh, in place. Like you said, we are a, a hybrid company. Uh, and so a lot of people are, you know, across the country, uh, even a few international but get, there are some things that it's just easier to do in person and, and work through and build that trust in the relationships uh, through collaboration just works great in person. And in our Madison office, we're proud to, to have that as a place to be, a place to go and, um, you know, a, an easy place to get to. Uh, and right in the heart of Madison as well, being able to enjoy the, the lakes and the outdoor space of, in particular in the summer. Well, two thoughts. One, can I just directly quote you in our literature about how great downtown Madison is? I'll just put you right there. <laughs> so thank you for the thank you for saying how great downtown is. And honestly, your space itself is just amazing. I know you invested in the space itself. It's just a gorgeous design, local firm that designed it. It's really a fantastic space uh, that really is a great collaborative space for you as a company when you do bring folks into town to to, to work. Yeah, we, we really appreciate all of the effort that went into the design. Uh, they've won some awards now, I think, as a result of the work they did. And we tremendously appreciate that. I'm really proud of, of what we have to offer and, and bring people to for, you know, employees and, and outside, you know, meetings as well. It's, uh, it's really great. 
All right. Well, thank you for all you do. But you're not quite off the hook yet. I've got normally we call it the Fast and Furious Five, but I have six questions for you. So I'm going to ask you a question. Whatever comes to the top of your mind, just give me your answer. But the first question is a little longer. This is not your first entrepreneurial journey. I noticed that you've been an entrepreneur since I think it was 13 or 14 years old. So this really is in your book. Tell us about your first business you started. <laughs> My very first, I, I actually, well, I mean, you know, a, a, Washed cars driving down well, the street. Well, sure, right. Uh, yeah, selling baseball but, cards or whatever. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, mowed lawns. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I did start a business that ran a few more years than that, um, a, a boat cleaning business in Milwaukee awesome. um, that I built and ran for uh, about eight years or so. Um, and, we, you know, I had four people working for me and we uh, we worked on 20 to 30 boats a week, depending on the week, um, like I said, in downtown Milwaukee. Uh, before ultimately deciding I needed to learn something new, develop some new skills, <laughs> sold that, and um, and, and moved on. So that was that was number one. I love it though, but you really are an entrepreneur. It's it's in your blood, isn't it? I mean, just from from day one, it's pretty cool to watch. And it's honestly, I just gotta say, you've been a great friend to our organization, and watching your organization grow and your your entrepreneurial journey. You're in West. It's been it's been phenomenal. All right, here are the Fast and Furious Five. Whatever comes to the top of your mind, what's your okay. favorite downtown Madison restaurant? Ooh, um, I, I love the old fashioned. You can't go wrong there. Those cheese curds, they really are good. And yeah. I know I shouldn't say that. Like that's like the, <laughs> the stock answer you should give as a as a Madisonian, but it they really are good. All right. What's the best sporting event you've ever attended in downtown Madison? I was fortunate enough to uh attend UW um in some really oh, oh yeah. Events really solid sporting years. So, I mean, we went to the Rose Bowl twice. I didn't go to any of the Rose Bowls, but I, you could pick any number of the UW football games during that time. And they were, uh, they were amazing. So I, I'm the, just going to say the like, yeah. like 2010 to 2013 football seasons in general. <laughs> it's, I mean, it, sports are a really important part. All right, you've got an out of town visitor. Okay, someone's coming new to fetch. They're, they've been hired and they're going to be to Madison. Where do you take them for the day to show them the best of downtown Madison? Um, yeah, I, the terrace is is terrific, right? You can't go wrong with a sunset and and beer at a nice summer night at the terrace. Love that. Um, we've done the the uh, pontoon porch. I think it's called. Uh, a yep. couple of times, but going around the lakes, I'm a huge fan of the the water and the lakes personally. Uh, so any any option that it involves uh, the Madison Lakes is wins my heart. Well, it makes sense. You did start a boat cleaning business, so that that does make sense. All right, you're at the Union. What flavor ice cream do you get from Babcock? Oh, uh, I should I should phone a friend. My sister is the real ice cream <laughs> aficionado. Uh, you, and, yeah. Well, I, you can, I'll, I'll, you, I'll be your friend. You could say orange chocolate chip a, or something like that. Okay, I'm going to I'm a cookie dough fan though. I'm a cookie oh, there dough. You go. There you go. Well, then Tyler, the new chancellor's uh flavor is uh, manuki manuki dough and it's a it's a cookie recipe. Yes. Yeah, so, I right. play on words, obviously. All right, last question. What's the one food item you love the most in all of Madison that you're like I have to have that when I'm in Madison? You know, um I'm terribly sad that Australia closed because oh, was, yeah. paella. I have been looking for a paella that is like Australia's paella, and I cannot find it. But that would be my pick. Um, otherwise, uh, well, another Tory Miller restaurant is uh, Grace's Bibimbap. Is just I just really like Bibimbap. I don't know I what it is, but it just gets me. I knew I liked you. That would square on say the exact same thing. I put the spiciness in it too as well. Love the oh the oh whatever those rice sticks that they put at the bottom. They're that's really good. I will say one piece of insider advice: the boss cake, which was on the menu at Estrellon, is now on the menu at Gray's. So Tori did move that over. People right. love that boss cake. So there's your right. inside downtown tip for you. Well, Noted. Tyler Kennedy, co-founder and senior vice president of operations for Fetch. Thank you so much for joining us in the Downtown Happenings podcast. And honestly, Tyler, thank you so much for all you do for downtown. You know, you all have just your meteoric rise and what you've done for our community and still you're, you're bedrocked in our community. It means a lot. So thank you, Tyler. We really do appreciate all that Fetch does.
Well, thank you. Really, really appreciate you having me today and appreciate everything that you do for downtown. It certainly wouldn't be the same without you and without DMI. Well, wow, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Join us next time for our Downtown Happenings podcast or just come down and support downtown or use Fetch and, and make sure you get all the rewards possible you can when you're purchasing something downtown. That to me, it sounds like a nice two for one. All right, we'll see you soon downtown. Have a great day. Thanks for joining us.